Hi, my name is Michael Chow, and in this screencast, I'm going to use GitHub Actions to run a data analysis by scraping some data and then put it up as a GitHub site. The cool thing about GitHub Actions is that um, you can set up some things in your GitHub repo so it can run, say, every day to update the data and to refresh your site. The other interesting thing I'm interested in exploring is uh, I want to use Binder. So this is a tool that lets you um, run Jupyter Notebooks in the cloud. And by using GitHub Actions and Binder, uh, I'm going to do the full data analysis, um, put it into a GitHub repo, and deploy it as a GitHub page that updates daily um, without ever leaving the browser. Um, I'm going to be doing this live coding, so I have a sense of what to do, um, but may hit snags along the way. I wanted to let people in uh, on the journey as I, I figured this out. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is set up a GitHub repo. Uh, Actually, I haven't thought of the name. I probably should have. I'm going to do GitHub Actions Demo. Uh, not the most exciting. Uh, we'll just do all this. I'm going to initialize it with a readme. Let's set Python as the git ignore. Oh, I should have just typed in the words. Um, and the license. Um, what? Let's just do MIT. All right. So that's going. Um, the first thing I want to show you before we get started is Binder. So. Oh, by the way, so we'll be um, analyzing this Spotify charts data. This is data I've seen before um, and pulled before, but I'm interested to do it um, again as part of this full workflow. So this is top 200 hits um, on Spotify. Um, I think across, here's the past day uh, across the globe. So you can see um, DaBaby and Roddy Rich are really killing it. They've got about 5 million streams. Um, and there's a whole list here of artists uh, across the globe. So I'm curious to pull it, uh, maybe make a plot and put it up as a site. Um, to do that, I want to run the analysis in a binder, a Jupyter Notebook on binder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy in the name um, of the repo to show you. Um, all right, notice it gives me this link. So now I can go to it here. I think that uh, there's one trick, but I can't remember how to do it. I think it's this. Uh, let's just try, yeah, let's try that. Um, I can't remember if it's labs or labs. So there's a notebook and Jupyter Lab. They're slightly different. Um, and I think this will give me Jupyter Lab. Anyway, so Binder, what it does is it takes your repo and it sets up uh, an environment in the cloud so people can run um, code based on the requirements that you put in your repo. So it'll set up a Jupyter Notebook um, that we can use and explore the data in. Um, the other piece is GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions, um, basically they're this cool tool to, like it says, automate your workflow. So now in our repo that we've created, we can put in some files and instructions. And this might tell GitHub Actions to run something every day or to pull some and set up some Python code and to run some scripts. Um, so uh, they've got a lot of uh, explanations, a lot of cool stuff. Um, I think if we go all the way down, uh, yeah, actually, let's go to here, I think. So we'll explore GitHub Actions. Um, this is the marketplace. So this is basically people can list, at, create and list actions that you can use. They're like building blocks um, for um, running things uh, automatically. So I'm going to type Python in. Um, notice this one's by GitHub itself. So it's by Actions. Um, this one isn't. So this is by a user called Why Not Hugo. Um, we can go here. We can see this is um, their GitHub page, right? So basically, they've created some actions for us to use. Um, the main ones we'll want is we'll want to set up Python. So I'll click here. Um, it has some nice instructions and a demo. So um, yeah, so I'll um, pull this and put it into a file in a second, and that should uh, let it run. Um, the other thing to note is, uh, let me just pull up a file for you to look at. This is one I had uh, prepared. So this is for another project I do. Basically, there are three main parts you can think of to a GitHub uh, workflow. Um, so it has a name. It has on, which is. Um, when it should run different actions. 
Um, so this one's running whenever certain branches are pushed, um, but it can also run on a schedule. So this is using something called a cron job. This runs every day at 4 a.m. Um, and then the actions part uh, fit into this job section. So um, you can have a number of jobs here. This one's called build um, with the nice title scrape and store. And um, it runs on Ubuntu. And then this part is the most important part. This is where the actions are. So notice um, this is a number of steps. Uh, each hyphen, right, is a new building block uh, that it will run. So this first one checks out our code. Then it sets up um, Python. And then we have one to install dependencies. So um, notice this is what we're looking at to set up Python. Um, so if I do use latest version, notice this is exactly what we have um, here in this, uh, right here in this script. All right, so um, I'll get to the GitHub Actions in a second and go back to it. Next, I just want to make sure that um, we see um, Binder. So this is Binder. It's all running in the cloud. Um, notice it's been set up around this repo, MHL GitHub Actions. Um, I can click uh, New. To pull up a new notebook. Um, great, so now it's running. Um, I think we can already import some things uh, like requests. This is a library normally you have to install, but I think Jupyter Lab actually or um, Binder actually uses it here. So um, we can get libraries, right? We can run code. Um, one thing is we'll probably need pandas uh, for the data analysis. We don't have it, so. What I can do is, um, there we have a couple options. So uh, I'm going to run this really fast. Notice pandas isn't here. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to list it in our um, requirements here. So uh, I want to edit. Wanna, oh, I wonder. Um, you know what? I wonder if the new site, normally I press E. Let's add a file. Uh, I'm going to create a file called requirements, requirements.txt, um, and I'm just going to put in pandas version um, 1.0. I think 5 is fine. Let me double check. Cool. So what release? 1.0.5. Cool. Let's just do that. Um, I'm going to just commit it directly. So now we should have pandas. Um, I'm actually going to install, uh, let me also do a library I use and develop um, called Suba. Uh, it's built to help um, simplify data analysis. So, all right, so that should be good. Now we can, I think, go back here and what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to binder again. Um, I'm just going to open it here. All right, so that'll set up a new binder, and now it will update. It'll actually install those packages for us, so we have them to use. Um, the other thing I'm going to do quickly is um, I'm going to copy this badge into the repo so that when people click it, um, they actually... Uh, oops, that's not right. Yeah, so they'll be able to see a badge in the readme that um, points to that binder. So put this here. Just paste it in. Uh, cool. All right. Um, I'm going to try to be moving a little bit fast since I have uh, meetings coming up, but um, hopefully you can follow along. Uh, all right. So now we have Binder. You can click this to open up the Binder. Ah, I did something wrong. Um, oh, Suva doesn't have a version 0.2.4. That's embarrassing because uh, it's a package I made. Um, let's see what release it's on. Uh, oh, 0 point, uh, 0 0.21. Yeah, it's my bad. So uh, I should know the things I make better. So uh, let's see. Uh, 0 0.0.21. 0 .0 cool. All right. And then um, so I'm just going to refresh this. Actually, let me show that when uh, when we click here now. So if I'm a person, I see this badge, I can click it, um, and it opens into Binder. So now you can see it's installing everything we need. Um, hopefully it won't take too long. 
uh, and we can get into the analysis. Um, while this is loading, I'm going to jump back to this page and create our first GitHub action. Um, so what you do is you put it in, I think it's the, and I'm going to check here, uh, .github slash workflows. Um, all right, so let's do that. Uh, .workflow, wait, no, that's not right. .github slash workflows, and I'll call it again main.yaml. All right, I'm also going to, uh, let me try to do this. So, um, I don't know, I'm gonna just call it main. It's not the most exciting on. Um, we can do it whenever it pushes for now, maybe. I think, um, let me double check, I think it's push. Yep, and then branches, so push, and then branches, let's just say main or master for now. Um, that'll probably be the one I just work on the whole time. All right, so uh, that should be good. And then we need to define the jobs. So I think this is called jobs, let me double check. Yep, and then I'm going to actually copy this in here. Um, and then what I would do is if I wanted to run Python, is this goes to steps and I'm going to pull up um, let's see where's the, the github action again so Python set up Python um, and here I'm just gonna pull this out of the demo so um, here we go uh, this is using so notice this is using an extra option which is um, the you can de define the specific version um, you want. So let's paste that in. That's not great. Cool. All right. Uh, sorry, I need to. Oh no, that was wrong. All right. And then this looks good. Notice every hyphen is sort of a its own new step. Let's use Python 3.7. Uh, I think Python's on 3.8 or 3.9. Um, I'm just going to take this out because it's default. All right, and then um, I'm going to, uh, I think we need to pip install our requirements. Maybe not, but it's something I did here, so I'm going to paste this in. Um, let's see. All right, so now we have this next install dependency step that upgrades pip and then uh, pips pip installs our requirements. Um, and then I'm just going to run echo hey. So this is a job that will just say, it'll just should output some text. All right, so you commit that. And then we'll be able to jump over to Binder. Um, it may seem like I'm jumping a lot, but I think this is sort of part of development, that when one thing runs, there's an art to running one thing and jumping to another in the meantime, so you're not waiting for things to build. Um, so, but you'll notice the GitHub action is running now in this actions pane, um, and it should eventually have some stuff here uh, in a second. Or let's see. Oh, I click here. So, notice this is um, scrape and store. So main is that name we gave it. Uh, I think scrape and store is accidentally. Yeah, it's the name I accidentally copied from the other um, workflow file. So in a sense, it's saying we're running this job here, and it's this is the name you gave it. All right. Um, so that's going. Let's try to quickly, with the time we have, um, run our analysis. So in Binder, I'm um, going to import pandas. Um, I'm also going to, uh, let's see, let's check out the Spotify link. So there's a download to CSV button. Let's just see if I can um, do it. So it would be pd.read CSV. All right. Oh, didn't like it. Let's see. Forbidden. Um, let me try and try another library called requests that's made for web requests. So request.git. Put this in its own cell. Okay, so that I 
think it worked. I'm gonna let me um I just want to look at the first say five lines of the data. Oh. Oh, that was dumb. So split lines is a function that um, creates a list where uh, every entry is a its own line. Um, and it looks like so this is one line. No, this is um a note of some kind. So it's probably not what we want. Um, it looks like the um it looks like the headers are here. Um, so what we can do is. Uh, oh, I need one more thing. I'm going to um, import IO. The way this works is, um, you know, pandas, normally you would read CSV from either a file object. You might use open and then some file name. Um, or you might use a string that's a file. This string is actually the data itself. So what we have to do is use string IO to say, hey, this is a string, but treat it like we just opened it as a file. So... Um, Cool. And then uh, just make sure that works. Yeah, and then I need to skip. Oh, what's that keyword? I think it's um, uh, skip, I think. Skip rows. All right, so skip rows. Uh, I think it's zero. Let's see. Nope, skip row one. Cool. All right, so data's in. Uh, we've got the position, the track name, the artist, the streams, the URL. Um, so you can see that's basically this, right? Position, track name, streams. Um, artist is here. In the data, it's its own column, which is convenient. So I'm going to call this data. Um, I'm going to name make these just the same cell. And then um, I'm going to run data.info just to see what we're dealing with. So Position's a number. Uh, track name, artist, are objects. That probably means they're strings. Um, streams is a integer, right? Because it's a number. URL is an object. Um, one thing you can do is, um, I think you can run this. And this will change to uh, newer types in Pandas. So Pandas has a now a native um, to Pandas string type. right? So notice that these now are different types. These are made to handle um, missing values better. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, why don't I just keep that? So um, cool. Uh, I'm going to actually put this. Uh, this is fine. So uh, data convert D types. Um, and I'm going to say maybe top 200. OK. And then. Let's see, so let's just put up a dead simple plot, and then we'll go back to the GitHub actions, and we'll try to put it up. So, um, oh, I I have to admit, I actually never use pandas plotting, and we haven't installed um, plot9. So this is trouble for me. I'm going to install it um, really fast. The exclamation point means I'm running a command like it's in the terminal. Um, so we can use this to install things. Um, cool. And what version? I'm just going to pull out the version here. So uh, let's just update this. Um, sorry, this is, I'm really, these tabs are starting to spiral out of control, but um, it's life. So uh, plot nine, commit. And then when we open binder again, um, it should have plot nine. It'll take a little bit of time to load it, so I'm going to keep working here. So now, what I normally do is I import from Plot9 everything. Uh, I find it extremely convenient. Um, we can use now ggplot is a Plot9 function, um, and we can use this cool, really convenient syntax. So what I'm going to do is position by streams, and then add uh, points. Oh. Uh, let's see, what was, I got a column wrong. Oh, position as an uppercase P, which is not ideal. Actually, normally I, I would clean up names like these. Um, but for the sake of getting through, let's just go here. Oh, let's see. Oh, um, hmm, I wonder, 
So let's go back to top 200, get info. Uh, it's an int, it's an int. Um, I'm gonna try this with data. I think, I wonder if it's a pandas issue. Yeah, I think there's some issue with the newer uh, version of pandas where when I convert the D types to these special native ones, um, something goes wrong. So uh, that's worth looking into on plot nine. Um, the net effect is I'm going to keep working with this raw data. So this has the more classic types. Um, these are like NumPy types. All right, so uh, we've got this, cool. Um, I'm gonna name this, oh, I don't really need to name it, but name it analysis. Um, all right, so one thing we can do now is uh, we can download this analysis. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to, oh, I could either run it as a script um, or I could uh, download it. Um, let's see, why don't I just download this uh, for simplicity. So I'm going to download it as a notebook. Um, cool. And then what I'm going to do is, ah, it's named untitled. Oh, no, no, this is it, analysis. And then um, I'm going to oh, leave here. Um, I'm going to paste it in here uh, so that it's in the repo, right? I think I can drop it, actually. Let's see. Cool. So analysis, boom. Now it's in the repo. I probably should have removed the um, outputs. Why don't I do that right now? So uh, I'm going to restart clear output. Um, I'm going to do this again. Let me um, delete this. Uh, okay. And then um, I'm just going to download this again. This is kind of a silly way to do it. We could have just pasted the code in. Um, uh, but for now, it's like, it does the job. So, all right, analysis. Cool. Uh, add analysis. All right. So we've got the analysis in the repo, right? We've got our workflow. Um, and let's check back in on our actions. So I'm going to delete a lot of these uh, and go here. Um, cool. So it's running this commit. Um, we click here. We can see um, this job ran. And we can see the specifics of the job here. So this is each step from our file. Um, let me go to that real quickly. Uh, all right, so this is each of these hyphen points um, is listed here, right? Set up, um, run checkout, set up Python, install dependencies, run that job we had, and then there are some extra things at the end. Uh, all right, so notice this ran. It just said, hey, it's not the most exciting. Um, what we can do now, though, is um, we can do something else. So uh, this will be a little funny, but let's. Um, so I'm basically running these are shell commands, um, and notice I can run a tool like uh, MB convert. Oh, what's the? Um, I think it's. Uh, You know, I think it runs HTML by default, but let's see. All right, so it's converting it to HTML. All right, so it did that. Oh, that was dumb of me. I, I actually don't need this. So um, it's running it. Notice it created the file analysis.html. Now I can open it. Um, and here it is. So this is our analysis. It's not exciting at all because the analysis needs to be run. So let's do that. Nice. And then I'm going to save it, and I'm going to run this again. So, mb convert. Uh, just create it, and now, now we've got our data, we've got our plot. So that's great. Um, 
So what I want to do is I could either I can do two things. Uh, I could either uh, put this at the no I can't. Let me um sorry. What I'm gonna do is um here where I run instead of running this echo hey thing I'm going to um put a pipe. This means uh let me do a whole block of code. Then I'm gonna run the command. I don't need an exclamation point anymore, and that should actually create analysis dot html all right so uh, i'm gonna save that um notice though that uh this will just do it on github actions but we don't have a way to view it right now so we need some way to be able to see the analysis um what i'm going to do is i'm going to use another action um called github pages action that lets you um put it up on GitHub so we can actually access the page and see we can actually direct people to the analysis alright so um, we need this step um, and now it gets a little bit just a tiny bit tricky so um, oops that's not right okay alright that should be alright and then um, what we do is um, deploy to GitHub pages. Um, I guess I'll use uh, uppercase. All right, and then they need this GitHub token. Um, the key here is actually, let me double check. I think so. What I did before is I used a deploy key. Um, this is a slightly different tool. So, um, oh, this will be a little bit. I gotta, I think I can do it quickly. So, um, Let's uh, open settings. Um, we basically need to, and this is tricky, we need to generate a deploy key. So um, I didn't think about this before, but I think we can do it uh, uh, from JupyterHub. The, the one thing I'm not totally sure about is the command. I think that um, something like uh, uh, SSH key gen or something, let me... Um, I actually think there's a instruction here. So um, deploy key. Oh, oh this one. Um, right, so they have a tutorial here. Deploy key. All right, so let me close this. Um, yeah, you can run something like this. Um, and I'll show you what it does. We're actually just going to run it from the notebook. Um, this isn't a great idea. You actually should probably run it from your computer um, because at the end of the day, you don't know uh, who can see things. I mean, I trust Binder, but uh, you want to be a little bit careful with these things. So um, that generated the key. The key is that um, now there are two extra files, um, GitHub pages and GitHub pages.pub. Um, Oh, I actually meant to, let me remove this. I'm just going to leave this blank. This is where you can put an email in. Um, I'm going to call it, ah, crap. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Shoot. Uh, so here, uh, I need to remove these because this prompt, uh, I can't fill it in in the notebook. So um, just weird, normally you can. Uh, anyways, I'm going to call this robot. Uh, cool. And then if I look in this folder, um, we have these two things. I'm actually just going to cat it. That's not, this isn't a great idea again, uh, but so you can see I'm going to do it here. So this is the public key. This one um, normally you put on a server somewhere. Um, so deploy uh, GitHub pages. I think that this is the one they want here. Um, did I get the whole thing? Yeah. All right. Added the key. And now, oh, and then we need to go to secrets. Um, and the key is, um, let me pull it from here. Uh, we're going to keep a secret called deploy key. So, um, how this works is um, GitHub Secrets let you put in 
confidential information that you might want to use during this job. So here we'll click New Secret. Um, we want its name, actions.deployKey. So I'll put that in. And then what I'll do is I'll paste in um, the other key. This is a private key. Again, um, I wouldn't use binder. I would use uh, my terminal to do this kind of thing. But um, I think incredible, it's incredible that it actually works here, that all these steps can be run in the cloud. So um, I'm going to put in the deploy key. I'll delete it. I'll change the secret key after this video. Um, but now this is added. And so now um, we can actually deploy our whole repo. Um, we might want to save our files somewhere else that's not uh, just the root directory, but uh, let's just do this for now. So, all right. Oh, that. No, I need to um, add GitHub pages deploy to actions. Okay. So this should work. Um, should basically check out our repo so that, um, in a sense, it's on this computer GitHub Actions is running. And then set up Python so we can use Python scripts. Um, we'll install some of our Python dependencies. Um, and then we'll convert this notebook we made to be HTML. The last thing that will happen is we'll publish basically everything on this computer. I would say, like, you can think about it as everything um, you see here when you do ls uh, minus the, the things we created. Or another way to look at it is here. So I'll delete these because um, we created them just now. But in, in a sense, it publishes all these files. All right, so let's take a look at um, GitHub Actions again. Um, sometimes I get a little lost in this menu. Oh. Something went wrong. Let's see what it could be. Um, why are you mad at me? Uh, OK, it doesn't want to do this step. Jupyter command not found. Oh, you know what? We haven't installed uh, Jupyter or MB convert in our repo. Uh, Binder Hub installed them because we needed them. Um, I'm going to. Uh, do it here. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to run pip freeze and just see which version. Normally you actually run pip freeze and this is your whole requirements file and it the benefit is it um, notice that it specifies all the versions um, that you want. So uh, I'm going to just grab all of these um, which should be fine and then um, you probably could have gone away with actually just Jupyter Lab here. Let me do that. So Jupyter Lab, and then um, the last one is um, NB Convert, which I think comes with Jupyter Lab, but just in case, we'll put it here. So NB Convert, cool. Um, actually, one more I want to do is Jupy Text. Uh, let me just install that real fast, and I'll show you why. All right, so. I'm quickly running out of time. I'm really kind of racing the clock here. So, Jupy uh, text equals 1.5.1. Okay. So fingers crossed, this builds. Um, all right. So we now we wait uh, because we've basically done everything else, um, and we just cross our fingers. I think it should install uh, pretty fast. In the meantime, we could also change um, this. All right, cool. So it's installing everything. Um, you know what? While it does that, let's just go back to this um, actions file. Notice I can see this dot here. So it'll tell me when it's done. Um, so here, notice that right now we're running whenever it pushes. One cool thing is. Um, we might want to do um, every day, say. Not just when we push to master, but we might actually want to do on a schedule. So um, 
this is the schedule syntax. I think that um, how it works is, uh, yeah, minute, hour, day, month, day of week, I guess. So minute, hour, day, month, day of week. Um, all right, so if we look at this other job I had, um, so it's minute, hour, so the zeroth minute, the fourth hour, and then this means um, every day, um, every, uh, what is it, like day of week. Um, I actually forget the other ones because I just run things um, so frequently. Yeah, every day, every month, every day of the week. All right, so let's um, get that ready and we can chuck that in too. But it didn't run. Uh, let's see, so this one, it ran, it actually created the notebook, that's good. The one thing it didn't do though is deploy. Um, and let's see why. So the key you are authenticating with has been marked as read only. Okay, bad sign. So, um, oh, wait. Uh, I think that's an issue of, um, dang. So that's an issue of here, the deploy key. I think we marked it as, let's see. Yeah, we need to allow write access. So I'm actually going to have to regenerate it, I think, right now, really quickly. So I'm going to click allow write access. Uh, let me delete this other one. It won't hurt to go through this again. Um, and should only take a minute. So deploy GitHub pages, allow write access. Um, let's run this key gen. I'm gonna get rid of these blocks. Okay, I'm gonna run this again. All right, we got it. And then um, I need to cat. Oh, I got uh, cat GitHub pages public. All right. So we'll put that in. Um, we've got write access. And then we need to update the secret. So I'll, again, cat GitHub pages. OK. And then this should work. Um, all right, so let's update the secret. Uh, OK. All right, let's see. Um, so this highlights another useful thing about GitHub Actions, though, is we can rerun these jobs. So let's rerun on jobs. Um, I think a key here, too, of understanding this is that when it says rerun jobs, it's specifically referring to this right here, right, this field. So rerun all of these. All right, so it's running. Um, should be going. Setting things up. It might take a second to install again, um, but then we should be good to go. Uh, the Jupytex part uh, is, let me just show you. Um, I'm not sure that we can uh, do this easily from here. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to, we'd have to restart Binder. Essentially, Jupytex lets you open files that aren't just notebooks in different formats. So um, I wish I had an example handy. I can, uh, let me pull up uh, something I've been working on. Oh, that was wrong. Oh, um, oh I'm in the guest. Uh, here, we'll just go to my, um, I run usually run as a guest uh, for screencast. We'll live uh, dangerously. Uh, that's a miss. No, ah, crap. Okay, so uh, this is an example of Jupyter Lab. Notice these are RMD files. These are actually in a different format, but um, saved as you can view them as notebooks. So this is for an interactive course I'm making. Um, and notice this is the raw file. Um, it's Markdown um, or something called R Markdown. And notice the code blocks are in these back ticks. This is helpful because it makes actually your whole notebook just a really easy to read text file. Um, and then with JupyText, you can actually open it as a notebook. Um, similarly, you can actually do this with just .py files. So it makes it really easy 
to open things. All right, so um, this ran, cool. Um, we're in business and then, so uh, right now my, um, normally you would go to um, mhao.github.io slash github actions demo, I think, is that github actions demo? It'll redirect because um, I have a custom domain, but then we should be able to look up this file right here. Yep. And then, oh, we need to add one more thing. Um, we need uh, Jupyter MB to convert to execute. So we'll do hyphen hyphen execute. Uh, and that tells it to um, run the notebook before um, converting it. So it'll fill out all the cells. Um, all right. And then, so while that's running, why don't I just show you quickly um, one of the last advantages of JupyTex. So um, we're going to open Binder again. Now it will install JupyTex and stuff. Um, and then I'll, I'll be able to show you. All right. So I'm going to start closing things because we, I think, did it. Oh, we can also add a cron job. Let me um, chuck that in here. All right, so now uh, this will tell it to run uh, Oops, schedule. We can say um, run the zeroth minute. Oh, that's nice that it prompts you the zeroth hour midnight. Let's say 4 a.m. Um, every day. Okay, so uh, I'll definitely change this uh, after the screencast because it's too often. Um, actually, let's run it. Uh, the fifth of every month, or the first. Let's say the first of the month. Cool. So I'm going to start that. And now it will just run the first of the month. It'll just run, it'll scrape, and it'll push to uh, GitHub pages. Oh, no. Oh, no, this is the cron job, but the other one worked. So um, now we should be able to see, yeah, awesome. So now it can just run and push it to GitHub pages and we can preview it in our browser. Um, one thing we could add is an index page. Um, I'll check this in, but I won't, uh, have time to show it. Uh, but we can add a file called, um, index. I think HTML or Markdown will work, but, um, welcome. Click to go to our analysis, and then I'm going to put a link, um, yeah, to analysis.html. Uh, I can put that here. Cool. And then, um, okay, so my computer literally just crashed, um, but I'm back. Um, just want to note this is the result. Um, the action ran. Um, you can click it to see the analysis. Um, I fixed a very minor issue um, in this where the cron had a extra um, quotation mark. Um, but I also just wanted to do a quick wrap up and overview of what we did. So GitHub Actions are a convenient way to run um, some code or some jobs for example, to put up to do an analysis and put up a, a GitHub page whenever something happens. So they go in this .github workflows folder, um, and you can view them from this actions tab, um, and you can see the list of things you've run. Uh, if you click into here, right, the actual job, um, you can look more closely at the things that it did. So you can see the individual actions it performed. Um, the other piece is, by using this requirements file, we can use Binder to do our analyses in the browser. So um, this is still launching, but Binder will take the requirements and will install whatever's in there. Um, so it's super convenient uh, and incredibly powerful. Um, the last thing worth noting is, um, let's say we have a file, just a Python file that um, is like this, right? 
uh, maybe um, this is importing a data frame, right? Maybe we just print this out, uh, print the, the data, add one and one, um, and save this. I'm also going to rename it to .py. Suppose we just have this file, right? This Python script. Um, let's do analysis do. Um, the cool thing about uh, JupyText is it can actually open it um, as a notebook. So notice that this is just that text file, but it can open it um, just like it's a notebook. So we could actually save this um, to the repo and then open it here as if it's a notebook. And we can use Jupyter MB Convert to build it. So those are all the parts um, of putting an analysis online using GitHub Actions and um, Binder. Um, one thing I didn't cover that could be interesting to look into is you can actually have this save data somewhere. So you could have it scrape every day and save some data using actions like S3 Sync. So this is um, Amazon Web Services. S3 lets you store data. And you can use an action to just, say, scrape something every day or every month and save your data there. You could even pull your data, right, using an action and analyze it. So there are a lot of really cool options with GitHub Actions. So I um, hope this was useful. I hope that um, you got a lot out of this and have a better sense of how GitHub Actions work. Um, and I hope you're able to really um, experiment and do a lot with them because they're really powerful. Thanks.